On the last, Cyberspace Man Mike, I was in the process of completing my Radical Edward Ponogachi Cyberdeck when Discord member Radical Edward gave me the idea of creating a Hacker's Ponogachi Pager. Hackers is a 1995 cult classic that delves into the world of computer hacking. Set in New York City, the film follows a group of young hackers who uncover a nefarious plot involving a corporate conspiracy to unleash a dangerous computer virus. Filled with vibrant visuals, techno music, and a cyberpunk aesthetic, Hackers captures the spirit of the mid-90s internet culture while exploring themes of rebellion, friendship, and the power of technology. Hackers continues to endure in the imagination of audiences primarily because its realistic portrayal of hacking is as authentic and relevant today as it was in the year of its release. After a bout of illnesses, I started 3D modeling the case. Despite being just another rectangle, modeling was surprisingly challenging. I encountered technical issue time sinks, such as the ports being obliterated when trying to bring the mesh into Cura. The workaround was to remesh the model in ZBrush, but I eventually realized that the problem was caused by errant overlapping geometry and eliminated the root cause. Printing came with its own set of technical issues. My nearly brand new Creality Max Neo that I'd previously spoken so highly of started printing poorly. There had been a bunch of problems, not least of which was that seemingly impossibly, the hot end was just floating about in the housing. Currently, however, there was a hitch in the Y axis. Disassembling it revealed that the palm wheels being out of whack was the most likely cause. Unfortunately, I damaged the frame. You might see the moral of the story as being don't use a mallet to disassemble a printer, but I see it more as don't engineer hidden screws. Fortunately, the printer was still within three days of the return window. The replacement printer was obviously defective from the very beginning. Prints had the consistency of candy floss. Reseating the Bowden tube and nozzle seemed to help, but the level sensor malfunctioned, crashing the hot end into the bed, likely doing permanent damage to the gantry. I'm in talks to get it replaced. In the meantime, I resorted to printing on my CR-10, which I now refer to as Old Reliable. It took way too many prints to tweak the dimensions within satisfying tolerances. Either my standards are too high, or I'm really, really bad at this. The detail on the buttons was too fine for Old Reliable, so I sent them to Shapeways. They cost a ridiculous $50 to print. About this time, I realized that printing in Yell PLA wouldn't suffice to create a convincing replica. The pager in the movie obviously began its life as black, with Serial Killer having painted it fluorescent yellow. I would have to print the pager in black PLA, apply wood putty, spray paint it matte black, then white primer, and then fluorescent yellow. Once I had a couple of prints that were up to my exceptionally high standards, I applied wood putty and then sanded it. In January, we had two barely suitable days for painting, which I attempted to take advantage of. Unfortunately, there just wasn't enough time to do all six or so coats properly. The biggest problem was that it was too cold and the paint on the print would cling to the overspray on the table. There's no substitute for a heated workspace with adequate room for activities. So many activities! I threw out the failures and started from scratch. Around this time I created hackers themed custom faces for the Ponogachi. The process for adding the custom faces mod to your Ponogachi can be seen in this live stream. I also plan to create a tutorial in which I edit out all my incompetence. The hackers themed custom faces can be found for free on cyberspacemanmike.com. Two months later, we had three back-to-back -back days over 10 degrees. Using a hanger and hooks, I suspended the pagers to be painted, eliminating the overspray issues. The results were very good, too good, and would need to be weathered. Using a foam sanding block, I took the paint down to the black layer around the edges. To add some grunge befitting a crunchy 90s hacker teen, I painted on some coffee. I added white out to the well in the buttons and went over any overage with a black sharpie. This resulted in clean lines, but slightly unsatisfactory differences in specularity in the black portions. The green and red didn't show up on the remaining buttons. In retrospect, I should have prepped them with white out as well. I couldn't find any new old stock Motorola badges with the dimensions I needed. So I created the logo in flash, of course, with the intention of printing it as a water slide decal. I imported the logo into Krita into a document that was roughly the physical dimensions of the badge, resizing the dimensions of the image accordingly. Then I copied and pasted the result several times into a document that was the physical dimensions of printer paper. I then printed the logos on water slide paper only to realize that prosumer laser printers can't print white because they don't have white toner. They assume the paper is white and simply don't print on that portion for anything that needs to be rendered white. So I printed stickers instead. 
Seating the sticker on the 3D printed backing was fraught. Then I had the idea to hold it up to the light in order to align it properly. Duh. I trimmed it and had the good sense to hit it with clear coat. Then I glued it to the pager, decided I didn't like how big it was, and did it all over again. The detail of the pager's seam lines are too fine to achieve with FDM printing and originally I was just going to leave them out. But at the last minute I had the idea of creating them in post using a Dremel. I figured that if I masked off the area to be scored I could get a clean enough straight enough line. And I was more or less successful in so much as I didn't ruin all my work up to this point. And here's the result. What I've learned is that this project is not suitable for an FDM printer. The buttons are too detailed to be successfully printed and even the pager itself requires extensive post-processing. A lot of people have expressed an interest in the hacker's pager Ponagachi case, but rather than provide a subpar product, I've decided to raise funds for an SLA printer through pre-sales. For less than it cost me to have just the buttons printed, you can pre-order a complete resin kit for $30. If our modest goal of $500, approximately 17 sales, isn't met, pledges will be refunded. If you'd like to own a Hacker's Pager Ponagachi case, please see and share the links in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and... Hyped up, Shut up and get in the car!